Once again, Ableton has been going absolutely ham with the beta updates. I've been keeping track of them. There's been a lot of them coming out in the last couple months. And there's some that are super tight and I'm like super hyped on. So today we're gonna hop in and take a look at some of the cool stuff that we have coming soon uh, with Ableton Live. Before we hop into the video, quick announcement for you guys. I recently dropped a super fire, complete start to finish music production course. It's designed to give you every single tool you're ever gonna need to produce professional quality music in 30 days. Either if you're totally brand new or if you've been producing for a while but you're just struggling to get your sound to the next level. It's over 17 hours of content distributed over 30 days of learning. We also have a super fire community where you can hop in and ask questions, free monthly sample packs, all kinds of cool stuff. Also, we've recently worked out a deal where if you sign up for the course, we can actually give you guys educational discounts on Ableton Live, FabFilter, Isotope, Sound Toys, Kilohertz, Arturia, and Output. So you can literally save thousands of dollars. And as of right now, the course is on sale, so it costs less than dinner. So definitely worth it, definitely worth checking out. Let's get into the video. So there's nothing necessarily new about the splice tab as far as beta updates goes, but for those of you who are unfamiliar, Splice is pretty much like the leading sample directory. They have everything there. It's pretty much the only like sample directory website I use and as well as a lot of other producers. Now there's a tab in Ableton where you can actually access it directly from Ableton, which is cool because historically you've either had to go to the website or there's a third party app that you can go into. But now it's all linked here right in Ableton. Uh, like I was saying, this there's nothing necessarily new about this beta update. But this feature, actually, they just implemented a couple days ago, and it's really cool. And if we go into key right here, basically, it's going to give us an option to apply key from DAW. So if we select this right here, it's going to sync with the key we have set up here in Scale Awareness. Those of you who are unfamiliar, the Scale Awareness section in Ableton Live 12 allows you to dictate uh, the basically the master key or scale of your project. And so if we're in D minor here, and we want samples obviously that are in D minor, we can just click apply key from DAW. Uh, you'll see here if we change it, now it's gonna change here. So that's a really cool feature, I like that because we can just come in here and click this and now we don't have to worry about if it's what key or mode it's in or anything. We can just search, uh, let's search like synth loop here. And sure enough, it is in D minor. So that's really cool, I like this feature. So this one I'm super excited about and that's the upgrade to the algorithm of the stem separation tool. Ableton has decided to basically create their own stem separation uh, algorithm. And so if we go to like a track here, let's just grab like a random track. That's a good one. We can actually right click and separate stems to new audio tracks. And so we can select which stems we want. So we can select vocals, drums, bass, other. So this toggle is new, high speed or high quality? Because honestly, the first time I opened up this uh, stem separation tool, I tried it. I'm like, this is trash. I cannot use this for anything. It's a real bummer too, because this would be so cool to have a good quality one in Ableton Live, but it just, it was really bad. Like it was really rough. I was not able to use any of the stems. However, now if we click high quality and click separate, it's obviously gonna take a little bit more time because it's doing a more high quality job. Now we have our stems. So if we take a look down here, let's take a look at like the vocals, drums, bass, other. So that's our vocals. Bass. It's like, background effects and whatnot. So this isn't great, don't get me wrong, like it's still nothing compared to like lalal.ai, which uh, to my knowledge is the best one that's out there today, best one I've used at least, but it is significantly better from the first version they that Ableton put out, which is probably the version we would have gotten if we had selected high speed instead of high quality. So this is a huge step in the right direction. Like some of these are actually usable. There's actually stuff we can do with these now. They're not like so convoluted and, and dirty and like, that we can't use them. So this is another feature that I'm really stoked that they're like digging deeper into and trying to like perfect. You can see that they're like working on it and trying to make it better. The next one is a MIDI generation device. And not only is it a MIDI generation device, but it's actually a drum generation device, which is kind of unique. So let's grab like a random drum rack here. Let's grab a decap kit. Can't go wrong with decap. And if we have a MIDI clip here, so it's gonna be a MIDI generation tool. So we need to insert a blank MIDI clip. Uh, and then we go to Patterns by Ifta. So there's two of these, 
patterns and sting, which we'll discuss in just a second here. So what this does is it basically uses uh, like an algorithm. So not AI or anything, but like an algorithm to basically generate you a drum loop. So it's going to like kind of read all these drums and determine which drums are, are which here. And then it's going to use this information to give us a drum loop. So if I hit, all I have to do really is hit, hit generate. Now this has a long way to go, but what I've found in playing with it and kind of like taking a deep dive into it is the way it lays out the drums and its selection and velocity of the drums and everything is pretty interesting because as you can see here, like our most used drum is like the hi-hat, which would be the case if we were like laying out a drum loop and then the accenting on the hi-hat. So you can see like the velocity changes here and here, and then the layering of the clap and the snare. So like, uh, I don't know why this is off grid. This doesn't really make sense. But the layering of the snare and the, the clap in the snare is, again, something that you would do that is it intuitively does. Um, the kick and then the, the little accented notes, like it, it, you can definitely see that it's it's got like an algorithm it's working with that's trying to make this like a legitimate drum loop instead of just like tossing out samples. Um, let's try like a different denomination, maybe like eighth. So again, you know, not something that I would generate a drum loop and like just call it a day, but I will say that it's got some potential to kind of like spark an idea that you can kind of build off. So this one's really cool. The other one uh, is Sting by Ifta. This is one that I actually like a lot. And this is what's meant to be an acid base generator, but it, it's, it really does generate like good little melodic uh, patterns very well. And so like, let's change this to like um, an acid base and same thing, you kind of just hit generate. It's got these parameters here. So like perfect like quarter bar uh, melodic ideas. Uh, we can move this up, we can. Super acid bassy. But I mean, these honestly sound good on like a lot of different instruments. I've used these to like generate leads like with Serum. So if we grab like this instance of Serum here. <laughs> So cool, nice little like motifs. That's that would be the right word. Nice little like motifs to kind of start a project on and like, work and work around and work off. So um, yeah, these two sting and then patterns, both really cool updates that I'm excited about. And then there's just a lot of like smaller stuff they're tweaking here, or there, like some options here to now hide from sidebar, which is cool. That wasn't historically there. So if you don't use splice, you can hide it from the sidebar. But yeah, these are just some in the last I, probably month or two that I, that have stood out to me that I'm like, wow, this is really cool. They're doing that. So hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know what you want to see covered next. If there's an existing feature in Ableton that you want covered or just a music production topic in general, I'd love to cover it for you guys. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Awesome.